I'm now ready to start the short rows for the heel. And uh, since we saw this sock last, I have blocked the first sock. And you can see that it looks a lot different than it did before. Uh, is it necessary to block socks? Not really. They're going to kind of block themselves when you put them on. But since this is for a magazine and it's going to be photographed, I do want to block it. Now, let's look at it this way. This is where I'm at right now on uh, the sock. I have counted the rows to make sure that I'm at, going to be shaping the hill at the same point. You can measure as well, but counting rows is more accurate. And how I'm going to create the heel is I'm going to be knitting along and I'm going to work progressively, progressive short rows where they become shorter and shorter and that is what creates this heel. And if you notice, this is a lot like you the heels you see on commercial socks, which is why I prefer them. They tend to fit me better. Now, up until this point, I have been working in the round, but when you shape a short row heel, you start working flat. And there we go. For a minute I had a horrible thought that I'd pulled this needle out. I'm going to do a short video on the different ways to work in the round um, as well that you can look at if you're not familiar with this. I prefer double pointed needles, but that's just me. Now, when you go to shape the heel, the one thing you want to make sure of is that I'm going to be shaping the heel back here because I have this flat toe. And you may think, oh, I would never possibly do that. Well, as a reviewer for the master's program, I can tell you people would often do it. If I shape my heel here, my toe is not going to be very comfortable to wear. So always just make sure, and there's one of the disadvantages of double pointed needles. I'm trying to pick it up at a funny angle. Uh, that uh, you've got, you're starting the heel on the right spot. Now I put these markers in, this is how I counted the rows. Can you believe I did it twice? All right, and here we go. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to work to the next to the last stitch and then I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna make a yarn over and uh, turn and go back and work my first short row. So I'm knitting cross and you get to watch me knit across all 63 stitches, since that's how many stitches I have here. And when you're using double pointed needles, what you do is you just knit up to the stitch, the last stitch on that needle. Okay, got that. And then I just use that needle to knit to the end of the row. There's nothing magic about it. But as I said, I'll do a little mini uh, video on how to do this. Okay, and I, as I said before, I'm working up to the last stitch. And now I'm going to turn and make a short row, uh, make a yarn over at the beginning of the row. Now making a yarn over between stitches is easy. You just throw the yarn, depending on whether you're on a purl side or uh, stocking that side. But doing it at the beginning of the row is a little different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my yarn under the, my working needle and I'm going to then purl that next stitch and notice that I've created a little yarn over pair. I've got a yarn over and the stitch. And you need to be able to recognize those guys. They're kind of a unit and they're close together and the more you work of them, the more noticeable they get. Because I'm gonna be counting those at various points to make sure that I have the correct number of short rows worked. And I'm purling, purling, working that little heel portion flat, not in the round. And I'm almost there.
and I work up to the last stitch on this needle and I've divided my stitches in half if you're doing this on a circular needle you just make sure that you have half of the stitches you're working the heel on exactly half of the stitches so I'm working them on 32 since this sock has 64 stitches now to make a yarn over at the beginning of a knit row when I did it on the purl row I had my working yarn under the needle on the knit row I have it over the needle and you can see that it creates a little yarn over and that next to the stitch so I have my yarn over pair now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work back and this is what I'm gonna repeat I'm just gonna do this over and over again until I have the appropriate number of short rows worked and in this particular sock that means I'm gonna have short rows worked up to the point where I only have eight stitches in the center because that's gonna be the narrowest point of my heel and I'm working 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 now this time I'm going to be working up to the first yarn over stitch pair and I want you to see that those look different. I've got that little yarn over and the stitch they're kind of one unit. I'm going to work up to that one and then I'm going to turn and do the same thing because this is a purl row my yarn goes under and I purl the next stitch and now I have two yarn over stitch pairs and I'll work one more of these and then I'm going to turn off the video finish the hill and then I'll show you how to turn the heel and I'm just working up there and I'm going to be going right up to my first uh, yarn over stitch pair and then I'll turn and make another one and there are various short row techniques you can use for this. You can use German short rows or whatever. I just like this one because I remember how to do it and I don't need to look it up. Um, but, you know, you might meet different people who do this a different way, but, you know, it's all good. All right, I'm going to work this stitch because it's the first stitch next to that yarn over pair. I'm going to turn. And because it's a knit row, the yarn is going to go on top. And I'm going to start just working the rest. Now when I come back uh, I will have more yarn over pairs and we'll be ready to um, turn the heel.